Hey, hey, want to say thanks because I've got the best subscribers on the YouTube planet. And today I would like to get back to work and make a video on a stock carburetor that came out in 71 for Volkswagen, the Solex 34 Pick 3. This is a great little carburetor, but it is unique in several ways to the other carburetors. And a lot of people have trouble adjusting it. And I'd like to show you how that all work so I'm gonna fire it up here and I'm gonna put you on the stand and uh, probably do a little bit of editing here so it won't be real time but you can see hopefully from this video that uh, the choke is closed you can operate the throttle and there's some steps that will give you a fast idle and like I said it's it's cold out here it's in a High 30s or low 40s, not sure which. And let me uh, let me fire this baby off. While that 66 is warming up, I want to come over here and we'll look at an actual breakdown of the carburetor. Uh, this is a, a Bocar model, but it's essentially the same thing. Not all of the parts are totally interchangeable, but it's what I have on hand to uh, explain what's going on here. Now, unlike these early carburetors, here's a Solex 30 Pick 1. If you want to adjust that idle, you definitely want to go for that idle adjustment screw. Maybe you got some neighbor or friend who thinks they know all about these old carbureted engines that you don't see too much, and the first thing they're going to do is go for the same screw over here. And that's not that's not the right thing to do on this model of carburetor. What you want to do with that screw is adjust it so that it comes all the way in. I really should have this thing together there we go okay you should have this thing so it on the bottom when the choke is open and everything's correct that screw should just be touching just be touching just come up to it and then maybe back it off a quarter to a half a turn it should not be lifting off the butterfly should be totally closed in the bottom of the carburetor so you're going to ask yourself so where's this going to get the fuel it needs to operate and uh, it's going to get some of the air through that little hole in the butterfly and then you're going to fine tune it i can hear the car in the background i hope you can too it's uh it's warming up it's doing some things back there okay this is where you adjust your air, and you want to start with both of these screws about three turns out, maybe a little bit more. You can, it'll just take you a little bit more time to get it dialed in. But this is where the air is going to bypass that butterfly, and this is the fuel needle, the fuel screw. Originally, that was covered up with some type of a plug. And I'm sure this many years later, most people have figured that out and, and dug it out. If not, you'll want to remove that little lead plug and pop it out. And this is your fuel screw. And it is on a needle. And it is very, very sensitive. Both of these are very sensitive. That's a huge hole up there. And what it's doing is providing you air through this big hole here on the bottom. And you're getting, you're adjusting a fuel an idle mixture and that's how you set your idle 
if your ignition system is in really good shape, you want to adjust your idle right there. If you've got one of those cars that every time you take off from a stop sign or uh, trying to enter into traffic, you either have to pedal it, you have to pump the gas as you take off, or you get that bad flat spot. It's very aggravating to have that flat spot, that bog right off of idle, and it should transition smoothly. I'm suspecting that the reason that's happening to you is that somebody has turned this screw in and essentially they're opening the butterfly. And what happens when you do that, there's these progression holes here. Let's see if I can get the camera angle right. This is not cooperating. See, there's little holes right there. And that, they should be completely covered up. Those are the, those are the fuel progression ports. And when your butterfly is closed, those are covered up. And what's that doing? What that's... <laughs> I love making these videos. It's the real world in my house, guys. When you first start giving it the throttle, and that starts opening up, that's where you're getting your enrichment. You can't totally depend on the accelerator pump. A lot of people will adjust their accelerator pump trying to get it to squirt more, but that's, that's not the ticket. That's not the way to go about it. Sounds to me like it's warming up over here. I'm going to make sure, oh yeah, that little uh, difference with the choke was opening up. And what I'm going to do is go real slow, choke opening up more. And it's going to slow down even more. And it's nice and even. And when I really slowly, I'm not just going to jab it so the accelerator pump pours in. Nice and smooth. Now it'll operate a little bit different when you get out there on the trail, get out there on the street. And uh, let's go over some of the other features on this carburetor. You can get more squirt from your accelerator pump by going to the plus side here on the bottom. You have two jets on this side of the carburetor. One of them is an idle jet, it's underneath this jet. These are, these are jets that you wanna take out and you want to take your carb cleaner or brake cleaner. I always like to use uh, brake cleaner because it's a little easier on my skin if I get it on my skin. You should be wearing gloves, but nonetheless, it is what it is. So you want to squirt, th these are very small holes. And this carburetor is very sensitive to dirt. And you got to make sure that you have the right gasket. If you buy one of those $20 uh, multi-carb and uh, rebuild kits, they'll give you different gaskets. Make sure that you get the right one. It's important that you have the right things exposed here. Okay? Um, your main jet, you access it from this side over here. You got a plug that goes in the side of the flow bowl. If you're going to park your car for the winter or for an extended period of time, might not be a bad idea to unscrew that and squirt some uh, WD-40 up in there all around and get, you know, with today's ethanol fuel, you can get all sorts of garbage down inside there. And if you want to get that uh, main jet out, it's really hard to do it on the car. Even if you have one of these split tail, that's what I like to call them, a starter screwdriver, you can usually get in there, but you don't have a lot of room to work with. There's other things in the way. You got your coil and different things. and. If you lose it in there, you're going to have to take it off anyhow. You're better off just taking it off if you want to get into this stuff. Um, 
right here you've got a another little device that they added they had a, a little rich pocket of fuel there and sometimes on after a few miles were on the car these things would run after you shut them off for a couple of seconds so what they did was put this little solenoid in here and and this would when you energize your ignition this pulls back and allows the fuel to go when you shut off the car kill the ignition this slams the door and it's supposed to cut off the fuel and it's supposed to help stop your engine from running after it comes off if you've got it it doesn't hurt to have it in there if it's if it acts up if you've got it in here and you connect and disconnect the wire you could hear it clicking and some people even cut them off when, if these things fail and break you can get by without it I've seen these things bent off cut off this one happens to be working and it's there and it, it's not it doesn't hurt a thing doesn't have a thing to do with performance or idle or anything else it shouldn't if it does you got issues other issues with this thing so one more time three to three and a half turns on both of these screws your air screw your fuel screw you want to run this thing so it's all the way closed and then back it off a, like a half a turn so that you even got more space there you want that spring closing that butterfly you want these progression ports covered up then you're gonna go back and forth from your air screw and your fuel screw and you just barely have to turn it eighth of a turn or so at a time and don't get in a hurry give it time to settle down because as soon as you change it you're gonna hear the difference once you get that thing where it's smooth and the engine's warmed up and you've got a nice idle, you might want to fatten it up on this fuel screw, maybe a, a quarter of a turn. Uh, just drive it and you'll find out. If you still have that little bog, it's probably going to improve if you've done it the wrong way. But if you still have a little bit of that bog, just try to richen this up just a little bit, eighth of a, eighth of a turn at a time, because it, it will make a difference. Um, your choke to adjust your choke on these things you just loosen the three screws and then you can turn your choke back and forth you've got a little line on the base and you've got these markers right here and that's going to help you uh, a lot of people if you want to disable the choke this is the, the place to do it you just forget the wire and you uh, turn this so that it it opens up the choke and go as far as you can and then just tighten the screws back down and you've disabled the choke completely this is part of the choke system it's a neat little system and it works if you want to adjust the float level on these carburetors you add different thickness spacers underneath this inlet valve and it will if you make a thicker spacer it's going to lower the float level if you make a thinner spacer it's going to raise the uh, fuel level in the float bowl and what you want to do is pay close attention to the one that was on there assuming that your car was running good at one time and now it's just running a little bit crummy this uh, ethanol fuel that we've got I've noticed that it actually thins down the gasoline years and years ago 50 years ago my dad used to use a product like this which is alcohol and it said to use this 12 ounce bottle to 20 gallons of fuel what that did was disperse the water that was in the fuel so that it would flow through because back in the day you we had all kinds of filters on pumps and and uh, the water could settle and get in your fuel line and freeze overnight and then the next day it would start up and run for a short bit and then die and it didn't want to restart because of that ice and that was the idea of that product today if you're getting 10 gallons of gal 10 gallons of gas at 10 percent alcohol that's a a gallon of alcohol that's going in your fuel and it's not entirely bad because it keeps the octane up where it is but they didn't process the fuel the same that to begin with if you remove the alcohol from the fuel you're gonna lower the octane rating if you go to a pump and you buy 
ethanol free gas it usually costs more because they have to process it more to get that same octane rating the higher the octane rating the thicker your fuel these carburetors came with a uh, 128 130 main jet and I live at 5,000 feet uh, near Denver Colorado so there's less air up here it's a little bit thinner uh, there's also a check ball that's underneath this screw and you you'll note that there's threads on that and what you can do is take your rear tail light screw it's real long and it will fit in there and stick up and you can grab that and work that up and loosen up that ball and clean everything out in there real good I hope I've given you a little bit more information that you can use to get your 34 pick 3 tuned up and running really good because I'm real happy with it and this is a, a larger engine some people put like to try to get the adapter plates and put this larger carb on older engines single port engines because the bases are actually different uh, I went the other way on one of my 1600 dual part engines I flipped that adapter plate over had to file a groove for the accelerator pump and I put the smaller carburetor on an engine like this and it ran fine it was my uh, Carmen Ghia and I would go down the interstate highway at, at 70 the speed limit and I still had throttle left it did kind of lack on some of the hills it didn't do as well on some of the hills because you're you're killing the fuel ratio another thing that people don't understand you know is, is far as these carburetors whether you're running dual carbs or not um, it's it's I can take the carburetors off of this engine and I can put them on this engine and I shouldn't really have to do anything to them and I've done that over and over and over again I move my carburetors around because you're tuning the jetting to where you live the altitude that you're at and you're tuning it to the carburetor your venturi and the vacuum that you have on your engine uh, i i rarely have to mess with the idle adjustment screw i might synchronize them and uh touch it up but that's about it now let's get down here and let's let's listen to the changes that happen now this is entirely this is entirely loose and that's what i want yours to be that thing should not be affecting it. Now, if you turn that screw, you hear that it does increase the, the idle speed, but it's going to idle too fast. You're going to be coming up to the stoplight, your engine's going to be racing. So if you turn the air screw, and you don't do a whole lot real fast, okay? Now I've reduced the air, and if I go after the fuel, early on in this picture I was fattening it up because I was thinking about getting this thing licensed and back on the road. Okay, now I'm on the slot. Make sure you got a good screwdriver, and I'm turning this thing. And the engine just starts slowing down. You should be able to hear that. It is slowing down and I feel it kind of like it's going lean, it's misfiring. Here it's speed up. Here it's speed up when I give it more air to go with that fuel. And I like my engines to run closer to a thousand RPM because I'm not the most patient person in the world and I don't want to sit there and warm it up. And you probably should warm it up. This engine has a thermostat on it and that causes less air to go over the cylinders and more air to go through these air tubes that go through your heat exchangers so you can get heat in the car quicker 
and maybe, maybe you might even get some on your defroster working by the wind chill. That's a big complaint from folks. Okay, I'm going to keep this video short and to the point. I, if you got any questions, leave them down in the comments. We may have to do more on this uh, at a later date. But I think this should help you get your 34 pick 3 working better than it is right now. Get rid of that flat spot off idle. Get it where it starts and stays running. And when you do have a hot engine, normal temperature, it's not racing at 13, 14, 1500 RPM. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Easy jeezy, out. You know, it wouldn't be fair to do all this talk about my carburetors and not take it for a little spin. I got all this stuff in here. I don't have a license plate, but we'll just go around the block and we'll see how it works with that tune. Hope I got enough gas in here. I just put a, a splash in. The brakes don't work. <laughs> this car's been sitting for almost two years. Over that block of wood. Now let's just say, oh shit. Those brakes don't work, I'm telling you. <laughs> Smooth takeoff. Let's go over to the lake. <laughs> let's see if this. Let's see how tight the doors are on this thing. If it's a Kubel wagon, if it'll go in the water. Oh yeah, there's almost ice on the lake. It's been getting cold. Winter's here. Now I'm in second gear, and I just gave it a little bit of gas and she's pulling away without walking. And that's the problem. If you use that upper arm, and you don't have that extra fuel waiting to come in those progression ports because you're running on it. And you need an increase of fuel as soon as you start giving it more air. That's why they're called progression ports. All right, I'm gonna get this thing backed up. Back in the driveway. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. There's someone that's not even pumping up. I'm gonna have to do some work on the brakes.